the following announcement has been paid for by the Wrestling Epicenter. Hey, hey everybody. Hey, guys. Hello, ladies. Remember me? <laughs> Let me talk to you, dummies. It's now time. It's beer time. Tick-tock. It's showtime. For the longest-running wrestling talk show in history. We are huge. Gonna be cool. You're where it's at. You're smart like me. Tune in each and every week. It's better keep listening. Or I'll come out of your computer and, and turn it on for you. Or else I'm gonna kick your sick of tape then. We've been known by a few names. The needs of the many far outweigh the needs of the few. The interactive interview. Interactive interview. Oh yeah. Interactive interview. The interactive interview. Interactive interview. The interactive interview. Interactive wrestling radio. 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 The Blaze. Blaze, 1260 AM. The Blaze. The Blaze. Blaze. The Blaze Rock. And a lot of other names. Weekend Warrior of Wrestling. The Pile Driver. The Epa Wrestling Center. Street Count Wrestling. <laughs> the Hours Lab. But it's all one show. The Wrestling Epicenter. Wrestling Epicenter. The Wrestling Epicenter. The Epicenter. Wrestling Epicenter, dude. The Wrestling Epicenter. Don't get off. And your host from day one. By ignorance or arrogance. James Walsh. Wake up, sleepyheads. I can care less. It all starts. What a rush. Thank you very much. Wrong. <laughs> I got two words for you. Thumbs down. Breaking necks and cash and checks. Burn. I've heard a lot about you guys. <laughs> Check it out. Get out of my face. <laughs> Woo. You win. But I'm desperately out of time. So what you gonna do when Place of Mania runs wild on you? Now. Hey gang, it is James Walsh here with you from the Wrestling Epicenter, and we are just about to reveal our exclusive interview that goes, actually, ironically, actually about 30 minutes with Contra Unit's Joseph Samael. He's the leader of Contra Unit, the manager of sorts. He wrestles sometimes, but manager of sorts to the World Heavyweight Champion of Major League Wrestling, Jacob Fatu. I think you guys are going to enjoy this interview, this great conversation. We talk a lot about Major League Wrestling. I think you're going to like it. And I want to thank Major League Wrestling for helping set this interview up. If you didn't catch it, we also interviewed Chris Candido's brother, as well as John Cosper, his writer, who did a great autobiography on Chris Candido that you can purchase now at eatsleepwrestle.com. That's eatsleepwrestle.com. Without any further ado, let's get to the interview here on WrestlingEpicenter.com. Oh, by the way, click the like button. If you do, it'll turn blue. Subscribe. We really want you to be up to date on all the classic and current content that we upload here at the Wrestling Epicenter. And, of course, find us at WrestlingEpicenter.com for all your wrestling needs. Check out the store. We got great stuff up every single day. And always at great prices. Keep us going free and clear. WrestlingEpicenter.com Welcome back to Interactive Wrestling Radio. On the Newsmaker line with us right now is a gentleman I'm proud to have on from Major League Wrestling. He is the leader of Contra Unit, Joseph Samael. Are you with me, sir? Yes, I am. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. It's a pleasure to have you on. Man, I got to tell you, 2021 is not looking you know, like 2019, but at least we got wrestling back, and MLW is, is one of those shows that I can't wait to watch every week. How great is it to be back in action? Well, I mean, we're not we're not fully back. Uh, like you said, it's not 2019, but but yeah, it does feel good. It's it's you know just being inactive for so long is just really foreign for me. I've been uh, in the wrestling business for 22 years, so this is 
just at, b- besides injury, this is the only time I've ever been inactive for, for so long. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's been strange, but it, it does feel nice to be back. Very cool. And the, the cool thing about um, what you guys did, MLW, is that when you guys were not in action, it's not like nothing happened. The office was working overtime to make sure that when you guys did get back in action, uh, there'd be more eyeballs on the product than ever before. Yeah, and for sure. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about the growth of MLW and how more people now can watch it than in any time in history. Well, I mean, uh, that's a testament to the hard work, um, first and foremost, uh, by Court Bauer um, and uh, the team he surrounds himself with. You know, uh, everybody that's in MLW, for the most part, wants to be there and believes in the in the company and the product. Um, so yeah, so everybody is kind of on board to, to push this thing and, um, you know, this, uh, being in front of, uh, as many eyeballs as possible is the name of the game. I mean, this is the entertainment business where we're trying to be viewed, uh, by as many people as possible. And, um, the good thing about MLW is that, you know, the product doesn't insult the viewer. So like you said, we, you know, behind the scenes, business has been taking place as far as you know getting eyeballs on the product and, and also creatively i think uh the team has done a wonderful job of, of connecting the dots of of why in, in our universe why things stopped um i don't think we mentioned pandemic once on the program and <laughs> that's um, a great call you yeah great I think call. that's really a a cool thing i, I think it's it's creative in a business that you know sometimes people feel that you know everything's been done and they get kind of lazy i think mlw's you know just um uh on an island on its own as far as that's concerned you know they they take the product very seriously and the company very seriously and and um nobody's afraid to be in a in the professional wrestling business and you know this is our universe and and we're able to create you know uh the the the, the our universe so we we um we do a really good job uh everybody involved and and um from the writers to the directors to the performers and uh yeah it's 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 been um it's been refreshing to see the company go through this hard time and on camera you know look you know like we haven't missed you know missed a uh you know skipped a beat you know we haven't skipped a beat very cool. In, in preparing for this interview, I was telling a few people who are wrestling fans but maybe haven't discovered MLW as much as they should have, who I was interviewing, and I was trying to explain what Contra Unit was. And I'm like, well, it's kind of like a militia. It's kind of like an army onto itself. But I thought maybe that's not how they view it. So how would you say Contra Unit should come off to us, the viewer at home? Well, it's kind of like a underground crime syndicate that um – is is uh you know i i am you know a lot of this stuff is to be revealed so the you know the 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 mystery in it all um really lends to the creative uh it's almost like uh, and and uh, i know i'm kind of my thoughts are a bit fragmented here i wasn't prepared to answer uh, this question, but it's almost like when you, when somebody, when you watch a movie and somebody says, yeah, but have you read the book? And in reading the book, your brain just connects all these dots that are tailor fit to you. Um, so I think that's kind of the way Contra is right now. It's like the, the viewer can kind of process what they, you know, on the surface, it's obviously an underground, underworld criminal syndicate that's trying to take over MLW and the airwaves and get their message out across MLW's broadcast. So they're basically hijacking MLW's tools in order to get their message out. What their message is, is to be revealed. What they're going to do to get there even further is is going to be revealed. How they do it will be revealed. And it's it's just compelling programming and it's things it's it's open-ended in a way that you can zig when you think people think you're going to zag and you can go up when they think you're going to go down and you can you know write as you go along as well as having a an end game in play it's it's just uh 
it's a, it's a, that's a really long, broad, strange answer. I, I know but <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it is what it is. So, so Contra unit is, is basically a criminal syndicate that is trying to take over MLW's airwaves to, uh, you know, to, uh, uh, get their message across. Very cool. And this is kind of a silly thing, but every time I hear the word Contra unit, the first thing I think of, because I'm a kid of the 80s, is the, the Nintendo game, the Nintendo Contra Absolutely. game with the guns. Up, up, <laughs> down, down, B-A, B-A. <laughs> it's kind of funny. That's still in wrestling because even Xavier Woods does a show called Up, Up, Down, Down based on that code. So it's kind of cool mm-hmm. that Contra, which I played 32 years ago <laughs> mm-hmm. constantly, is still relevant i guess would be the word yeah they could possibly be my favorite video game i mean that that you know i i, I wasn't thinking of that but that video game is was just it was just such a fun game to play whoever you know that i, I believe it was konami uh with konami, the company yep. but yeah but that game was just fantastic and it, it had the uh it was at the time when um uh commando and rambo we're, we're, I, mean, I don't know if you remember the cover work, but it was almost commando, Rambo, alien, predator, kind of a, it was like embodied yeah. every action, action movie at the time of the eighties. Exactly. Perfect. It was perfect timing. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the members of country unit. And one of them is your friend um, from the independent scene that, that it stayed with you in MLW. And that is the world champion, Jacob Fatu. How did you guys get to be friends, and, and what is it like working with him on this huge stage of MLW? Oh, wow. So uh, me and Jacob, I believe we became friends in 2015. Um, I had I was running a, um, uh, a company in California. Well, it still am. It's just the pandemic stopped it, uh, called uh, PCW Ultra. And mm-hmm. um, Fatu, I had met. Uh, on the internet and we he wanted to come to, to my company after seeing his film I wanted him there and um, we just became fast friends and he's just such an athletic phenom he's just such a natural athlete um, and he was early on in the business and I was you know in the winter of my career if you will and um, you know I, I had a thing or two to teach him and um, we sort of had kind of like I'd say like a a, a nephew uncle kind of a relationship and um, it was just a pleasure teaching him what I knew already and watching him soak it up like a sponge and then think you know kind of watering this tree in a way of, of you know things that I would think of in my mind but athletically I couldn't perform them <laughs> and then exactly. you know using my brain almost like a Frankenstein my brain with his with his talent uh, <laughs> uh, with his athletic talent rather and um, yeah it just became uh, a thing and, and he and I really really got on well and we really worked well together and we realized early on that um, we had something special. Like we would get in front of crowds and just the reaction of us um, was better than either of us on our own. It was just a strange thing. We just worked together. It was a, it was a, it was a contrast, but it was just, it was just right. It was magic. And um, me being around for 22 plus years, I, I, I knew right away how special that was. And um we started to work the independence and uh, started to make a lot of waves. We started to get some really big high profile matches and we were contacted by a few different companies, uh, MLW being one of them. And just what MLW was kind of uh, serving up was sounded best to us. So um, we knew that they had a lot of respect for the wrestling business and they saw the wrestling business the same way we did. And, um, yeah, so then we entered MLW as a package deal and, uh, we signed for a very short period of time, uh, as a means of protection for ourselves. And, uh, we quickly re-signed, uh, because we were happy with, with our position and, and, and the people involved with the company and, and everything. And then, uh, um, they're here, we're here now and, and we, you know, it, the, the vision that was seen from court um, and the way we performed it, 
uh, proved to be magic and MLW. And, and it, it turned out to where we were a group coming in. Um, uh, they essentially, uh, not to be braggadocious or anything, but they, they essentially based the entire company around us. And, <laughs> and, and as a heel, uh, to have that spot is just such a, the type of heel that I am and the type of heel that Jacob is, is we're main event heels. So to be recognized in that sort of a, uh, you know, to be recognized in, in such a way was, was very refreshing. Um, there's nothing worse than trying to convince somebody of your worth. Um, uh, MLW knew right away who we were, what we were and what they wanted to do with us. And when they set it up for us, we hit it out of the park. So I think it was as refreshing for us as it was for them. So, and that's always a, uh, a great business relationship. When both parties walk away happy, they will definitely come back and do business again. So that's what we did. And uh, that's where we stand now. And as far as I can see, um, we don't have any plans of going anywhere else. We're very, very happy with MLW. Awesome. Awesome. Another member of Contra unit is I kind of view him as a throwback wrestler. Of course, I'm talking about Simon Gotch. I really enjoy watching his stuff, too. How do you think he fits in with your guys' group? Well, uh, initially, he brought us in uh, in the storyline. So so we were coming in as his guys, and then as the thing started shifted, shifting, like uh, talking is my strong point. So I kind of shifted into the leader um aspect as far as and and that's also my personality backstage i'm an event planner i'm a booker i'm an agent i'm a i'm a a manager for shoot and for uh uh for entertainment so um and simon is is he's one of the boys he's i don't think simon would want to be a leader as far as that's concerned or want to be in charge of anything simon is one of the boys he laces up his boots and he goes to work um i do believe he is a throwback and and his wrestling is just he's so technically sound um so much so that he you could see him sometimes just wrestling around people it's almost like when they say you know can wrestle a broomstick you'll see him just wrestling around guys and it's just all him just you know putting himself in a position that he, you know he's just he's just a uh, a really brilliant technical wrestler um so yeah well, i'm very happy with with being involved with him i think he has the thing i really like about contra is the the different characters, all the personalities are vastly different, but in some weird, strange salad, they all kind of fit together in, in, in some way. Like, I don't think necessarily you would say, Oh, this guy, that guy, this guy, and put them all together and think, yeah, that, that looks like something. But for some weird reason under the, the brand Contra, we all kind of fit in this, this way. And, 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 you know, I attest, I, I attribute that to the way uh, Court built the thing, um, mm-hmm. but it's it's almost like you know a, a big band. You know, we all have our you know our our instrument to play, and we all are different. But for some reason, when we're together, we we make a similar music that's palatable. So um, yeah, so Simon is just he's fantastic. Nothing but but great things to say about him, and and he's a real uh, a real good resource for guys if you're trying to get into a move or you're trying to build a match or you're trying to get somewhere you know he can really fill in the blanks there because his brain works you know like a like a tech you know like a like a a, a, a math specialist you know a, a technical wizard if you will absolutely you mentioned it a moment ago that you're in the winter of your careers yeah i think how you described it uh, is that the reason that you wrestle a little more sparingly in mlw than maybe you do in other companies uh you know yeah that yes is the short answer um and and that's going to be the way um moving forward this this kind of kicked me into an early retirement um which is fine by me my my brain is a hundred percent wrestling and I'll always be in the wrestling business. And I've always gotten more, more, uh, satisfaction out of behind the scenes. It's always been, I love putting matches together. I love 
aging young talent. I love giving people the hows, the whys, the wins. Um, but you know, uh, you know, your your tool is your body in this business. And you know, I've been wrestling a rugged style uh, uh, combined with travel for so so long. And I can go, I can still go. But you know, it's it's. I feel more valuable in the role that I'm in. And to be quite honest, it sure doesn't suck not taking bumps. You know what I mean? It's, it's a, it's a exactly. real great spot because it's such a high profile spot. Managers in today's era tend to be, okay, that guy can't get it done. So make him a manager. It, back in the old day, the manager was the old grizzled vet that could really direct traffic out there. And that's, because MLW is such an old school company, that's the spot I'm in. And I really like that spot because I'm very old school. I I like the starting off selling the popcorn and setting up the chairs and the ring and then refereeing and then getting your spot as a wrestler and putting guys over and being a job guy and then getting a spot to where, you know, you get a gimmick and then you go through, you know, and and all the way up until and then you start backtracking down to where you you know I, I won world championships in, in in Japan I've main evented in almost every continent I've done all this stuff and then now I can still add but it doesn't necessarily have to be in the ring so let's showcase the Jacob Fatus of the world and let me be out there to go hey on that you should have done this or you should have done that or that you know or or water the tree and give them all the confidence they need when they do it right from an eye that can see that it was right you know wrestlers when they know they understand when they're being bullcrap you know what i mean so to have exactly, a, yep. somebody in their corner that they know they did something and then had to have somebody recognize it that built trust so now when i tell them you know something's wrong and i'm going to cut some limbs off the tree then then you get uh you have that same trust built and they trust you and they understand that you're you're coming from the right place so it's a great way to kind of get a get a talent you know on the right path keep them on the right path and keep them going forward and upward you know in this day and age of independent wrestling it's really easy to get off track you know and to have veterans um keeping you on track is not really the norm in today's business um no, like it was in the in, in the back in the day so so having an lw set up that way having jacob fatu coming from a family that's so old school that he's receptive to that st- sort of thing it, it really makes you know it's that there's all these pieces of this puzzle that are not seen um and and they're not advertised to the to the fan base but but there's many 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 pieces of this puzzle that make this puzzle and make this pu- puzzle successful. So, you know, that's, that's just, uh, that's just some of them. Absolutely. What, what I really love about MLW is when I'm watching the show, it doesn't feel like it's trying to be an old school company because the in-ring action is definitely a new school hybrid kind of wrestling, sure. but the appreciation for the history of wrestling, the Gary Hart tribute that you yep. guys did, um, the fact that you guys have the Von Eric boys there, it, it's just such a cool, it, it feels like where wrestling should be at in the yeah. 21st century. It's really something I've been preaching for years and years and years. It's, it's the bridge from the old school to the new. It's not forgetting the past. It's not forgetting the architects of the business that made these formulas that we should be, the, the, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But you have to update, you have to be modern. So, so, you know, it's that bridge. It's the bridge from the old school to the new. It's the athleticism, uh, which meets the history and the psychology. And that's very, very important. You know, some people are casual fans or they're new age fans and they don't care about that sort of thing, but there is a huge fan base that does care and I like to think that MLW is a product for them, and I like to be that product for them, and and to have you know those people that actually, you know, care about that sort of thing have a home, you know, and and the wrestlers too, you know, some of the wrestlers that are in MLW, um, I don't know if they notice that as much, but then you do have your Tom Lawlers, your your Low Keys, your Jacob Fatus, your Simon Gotches, your Von Ericks. You know these your, your LA parks. You know you do have these people that understand 
um, whether they're new like the Von Erics or they're old school like L- L.A. Park, they understand how important the history is and, and, and they respect it. And, and that's, that's why we are where we're at at MLW as far as talents being under contract to this company, because, you know, we, we feel like we don't feel insulted by the product. We don't feel like the fans are being insulted, insulted by the product. And we have pride in what we're doing. Totally agree. Totally agree. So if you're, An MLW fan, you've been following social media. You see what is on the horizon. Jacob Fatu and Hammerstone appear to be on a collision course. And those two guys, big bulls, big guys that really you could just imagine being a main event anywhere in the entire world. What do you have in mind for your guy going into a match with Hammerstone? Well, I can't divulge any of that. Uh, Hammerstone is... I like, you know, I can, I can say it till I'm blue in the face. I've been around for a long, long time. Hammerstone is perhaps the hardest worker I've ever seen. Um, I had, you know, I have seen Hammerstone cut 40, 50 pounds to, to make weight for a, for a light heavyweight championship. I've seen Hammerstone put on 50 pounds of muscle. I've seen him manipulate his body. The, the, dedication he has to his craft um is i mean it's it's uh, i i haven't seen it from many other people and and he is just a phenomenal athlete and a phenomenal talent i'm very very happy that he's actually getting what he earned i won't say deserved because i hate when people say you deserve it in wrestling the business doesn't owe you nothing but i definitely am happy to see him get what he's earned um in this business um he's a brilliant athlete he's a he's a brilliant talent he's the hardest worker in the room so the only thing i can really uh say about those two is is you know when those guys get in the ring, it's going to deliver. You know, you know that that's going to be a main event that that's going to deliver. And you know, I've got a few tricks up my sleeve. I know Hammerstone probably better than anybody knows Hammerstone. Maybe even I know him better than he knows himself. So, so we're going to have to wait and see on on how that all unfolds. But but you can bet your bottom dollar that that match is going to every fan and who. Put, who witnesses that match is gonna is gonna uh, is gonna get their money's worth without a doubt. That's one I'm definitely looking forward to. So this is my last question for you. It's kind of a cream puff, and you mentioned traveling, so I'll say it kind of like the flight attendant. We know you have a lot of choices in wrestling on Wednesday night, but why should fans choose MLW on Wednesday nights? Because MLW is not going to insult your intelligence. MLW is going to connect the dots. MLW is going to give you compelling characters. They're going to give you compelling storylines. They're going to give you some of the greatest athletes in the world. They're going to give you athletes of every style in the world. Um, you're going to see the greatest Lucha Libre guys, the greatest hardcore guys, the greatest technical guys, the greatest high flyers. Um, and you're going to see them all under one roof. You're going to see signature talent like Joseph Samael. You're going to see signature talent like Selena De La Renta. You're going to see guys like Alex Hammerstone. You're going to see who, in my opinion, is the baddest man on the planet, Jacob Fatu. There's no other champion in the business right now. I don't care who says anything about what I'm saying right now. I don't care. I don't care who I'm offending. There is no champion in the business that can come close to Jacob Fatu. Jacob Fatu is the greatest world champion in professional wrestling today, and that's the way it's going to stay. So you can see Jacob Fatu in a match in your in your mind against Brock Lesnar. You can't see some of these other champions in, in a match against Brock Lesnar. I can see that in my head, and it doesn't insult my intelligence. I'm going, who's going to win that match? I'm not going to go, Brock's going to clean his clock. So I believe that we have the greatest champion in the business today, the baddest man on the planet. And if you want to see the big boys, if you want to see the real wrestlers, you're going to come over on Wednesday night. You're going to watch MLW and you're going to see wrestling like it should be presented wrestling. That is the bridge from the old school to the new. Do you mind if I ask you for one last favor? 
Sure, sure. Uh, you probably already know what I'm going to ask for. Do you mind if I ask for a station ID? Just saying this is Joseph Samael, and you're listening to the Wrestling Epicenter. Absolutely. Just go whenever. Oh, I was going to say, do you want me to? I'll do the countdown. We'll do five, four, three, two. This is Joseph Samael from Contra Unit, and you're listening to the Wrestling Epicenter. The preceding announcement was paid for by the Wrestling Epicenter. I'm to listen, and if you like what you heard, I'm glad. If you didn't like what you heard, we'll go fuck yourself. <laughs> Most people done hung up on me. <laughs> we had a lovely conversation. <laughs> What a show. Oh, mercy, Daddy. I'm the radio dial. Don't hang up. Bye-bye.